one of those real candid conversations about our epidemic of loneliness and isolation. Our next guest is at the forefront of this very issue, warning that if left unchecked, loneliness can have similar consequences for our health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Please welcome to the TAM fam, U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Morthy. <laughs> Thank you so much. What an honor to have you here. I have to tell you, this show was inspired by someone we both know. I was at a dinner party with a lot of women, and it was like the first social group that I had been invited to in a long time. My son is now trying out to be in a kindergarten school. I started sobbing, started crying, saying, he got so nervous, he basically hid under the table. All of the moms around me said, I know that feeling. Mm. I know that feeling. And my tears started to go away and I started to feel better. Mm. And then Elizabeth started to talk about this loneliness epidemic that you announced in May and the strategy to help people feel less alone. I know that was a long question mm. and I've just turned this into therapy. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but that's what happens, I think, when you start talking about loneliness, people want to open up. Yes. And can I just say, Tamara, when, when, particularly when it comes to parenting, you know, I'm a parent as well. I have a five and seven year old. And I think it has been quite a lonely experience to parent, especially during these past few years during the pandemic. Yeah. So much of what we struggle with as parents, when our kids are going through a hard time, if they're being bullied in school, if they're feeling shy and having a hard time interacting or not performing the way they're expected to during a kindergarten interview, we can feel like it's our fault like we did something wrong. And I have felt that a lot as a parent. But it's only like when we get together with other parents that we realize that this is a collective struggle. Yeah. We're all going through this together. And we can help each other. Not only can we hopefully feel less alone, but maybe our kids uh, will be better off as well. So I'm so glad you shared openly. I think that's Thanks. one of Thanks. the most important things to do. Well, I mean, the fact that, that this has reached the level that you would ring this alarm, and it's being equated to 15 cigarettes a day. It's being, you know, uh, compared to the opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. What was the wake up call for you that I have to get out there in my role and warn Americans to immediately mm -hmm. address this? Well, Tamara, you know, the truth is, this has become one of the defining issues of our time, loneliness and isolation. And I didn't know this from what I learned in medical school. There's nothing, no course I took in medical school that taught me about loneliness or isolation. It was only afterward, actually, when I first started as Surgeon General in 2015, I started traveling around the country and I was surprised at what I was hearing were stories of loneliness. I was hearing it from older people, I was hearing it from busy parents, I was hearing it from college students who were surrounded by thousands of other students on campus but were telling me, often quietly in hushed tones, I don't really feel like anybody here knows me. I don't feel like I can be myself. I feel really alone. And that was what helped me realize how common this was. As I dug into the science, I realized that one in two adults in America are experiencing measurable levels of loneliness, but the numbers are even higher among young people. And I also came to understand that this is so much more than just a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. It has real consequences for our mental and physical health. What are some of the consequences? Well, it turns out when we struggle with a sense of disconnection, being lonely or isolated, that it increases our risk of depression, anxiety, and suicide. Mm -hmm. The surprising thing, though, is it also increases our risk of physical illness, like heart disease, dementia, and premature death. All of these things linked to loneliness. Yes, yeah, so loneliness and isolation, isolation, the broader sense of disconnection. And, and the thing is, when you look at the overall mortality impact, the life-shortening impact, of loneliness, it's comparable to smoking daily. It's even greater than the mortality impact we see with obesity. Wow. And I say this as a Surgeon General who's worked on issues like obesity and tobacco for years, but what we've come to realize now is that loneliness is just as important a public health issue. What I love that you do in your role is that you open up and you've shared a lot of personal details. Mm -hmm. And in the New York Times essay, you wrote this, I had largely neglected my friendships 
convincing myself that I had to focus on work after my job ended. I felt ashamed to reach out to friends I'd ignored. I found myself increasingly lonely and isolated, and it felt as if I was the only one who felt that way. Loneliness, like depression, can chip away at your self-esteem mm. and erode your sense of who you are. That's what happened to me. Mm. Do you, I'm ready to mm. sob because here you are, the U.S. Surgeon General, in this prestigious and important role, feeling what we're all feeling, mm. loneliness. Well, it's true, and the truth is, like, I, like millions of other people in America, have experienced loneliness as an adult, as a child. Mm -hmm. The truth is that achievement or success in traditional terms, fame, none of these things insulate us mm -hmm. from the human experience of being lonely. What is the common thread in our human journey that makes us all susceptible to this? Well, I think that over thousands of years, we've evolved to need one another. If you think back to, like, our hunter-gatherer days, when like yesterday for me <laughs> <laughs> but thousands of years ago long before of course we were all here we, we existed in small groups and tribes uh, that were of hunters and gatherers yeah. and in those times it was the people who relied on one another who built trusted relationships yeah. those are the ones who survive I know today like we have this notion that we should all be independent that means we shouldn't need anybody we should go it I'm good own. by myself yeah. I like, can, yeah. I'm fine no yeah. don't need anything yeah. but the person who said that thousands of years ago I'm good I don't need anything that person got eaten by a predator. Okay. <laughs> and the truth is, in a metaphorical sense, right. that's what happens today as well. Right. When you're good by yourself, you die by yourself. Yeah. And, and it turns out you're, you're not as good. Yeah. It turns out in the yeah, end by yourself. Good. We need each other. Yeah. So we have evolved this, in this signal, if you will, in our body that tells us when we're lacking that critical social connection we so need So there's for a survival. signal we can all look out for? That signal is loneliness. It's just like hunger or thirst. Right? When we feel hungry or yeah. thirsty, that tells us, hey, get food, get water. Right. When we feel lonely, that's a signal that tells us we need more social connection in our life.